so glad I was lost in but still the Lord took me in showed me love showed me love filled my heart with him my heart you were there for me when my world turned upside down you have made me glad took away my frown every time I let you down you remain the same chapter number 11, verse number 17. Thank you, Mrs. Cheryl Kelly, for reading uh, the entire background for this preachment today. We want to use uh, verse uh, 17 as a diving board or springboard uh, for this word today. I need you to pray with me. First uh, Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 17. Now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. I want to preach on this little subject. When are we going back to church? When are we going back to church? Beloved, I have been inundated with that interrogative, that, that, that question. I feel and handle that question multiple times every day from, uh, from our membership, and from those who even see me in the marketplace uh, that I do not know, those who know me and they're not necessarily a part of our church, but they say to me, when are you going back in church? Are you back in church yet? When are you going back to church? Um, in my daily conversation with the brothers and the sisters of the cloth, as I interact with preachers and pastors um, via the phone and on Zoom and all parts of the nation, that question is a regular. When are you going back to church? 
so I thought I thought that I would just kind of talk about that today uh, and, and kind of discuss it with myself uh, and uh, as I did with the Lord and let you kind of eavesdrop and listen in on this conversation that I've had with the Lord about when we go back to church. The first thing, the first thing that I need to consider is that when that question is raised, what is really being asked? What, what is the real, what is the real question? Um, sometimes, you know, what is said is not the real question or mm, the right question uh, it probably else might be asked in the wrong way or, or wrong question asked in the right way. So what does one mean when they say has to be when are you going back to church? Here it is. Are they saying when are we going back in the building? Or are they saying, when are we going back to church? Uh, I, I think the question is, really is, uh, you know, when, when they say, when are you going, we going back to church? It, it's really saying, when are we going back in the building? And, and, and the one thing, that I think that has been impressed upon all of us these last 14, 15 months, 14 months, is that the church is so much more than the building. We've learned in no certain terms that the building, the brick and mortar, of the wood and, 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 and the stone and the steel comprise the building or the house where the church meets. So then we, we, we've come to know that the people, that we are the church and that wonderful piece of terra firma, that, that wonderful composite of wood and stone and brick and steel uh, on the corner of Catherine and Magic Street uh, is a location. Uh, it is a geographical location, a house where the church meets. And so God hastened the day hasten the day when we will get back in the building and 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 and, and god knows that i as as, as as excited as anybody else is or could be in terms of anticipating going back in the building but more so than going back in the building i want to suggest then let's go back to church. Um, and, and so in, in this discussion and on this first Sunday, uh, on this Lord's Supper Sunday, I, I, I see here in this passage, in, in, in this passage of 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, I, I think, some good, some good targets, some, some, some good instruction of how to go back to church. Um, well, and, and the question is, when did we leave the church? And to consider that, that if, if, you, if you have left something, the suggestion is that you were there, that you have been there in the first place. 
And so in what sense has the church been abandoned? In what sense has the church been, been left? Um, in what way have we left the church? Yes, since the second Sunday uh, in, in March 2020, we have not been in the building, but I want to suggest to you, beloved, that um, e even though the building has been closed, my prayer is that the church has still been in operation. All right. so, so here in the, the book of First Corinthians, written by the Apostle Paul on his second missionary journey, you know, beloved, that Paul was a church planter. He planted churches. And he thought, beloved, that this church at Corinth that he had established uh, on his second missionary journey would be the church plant. That would be the primary reasons for more stars in his crown than any of the other churches that he had planted, but quite to the contrary. Uh, the real deal is, is that the church at Corinth caused Paul more trouble and more agony and more sleepless nights than any of the other churches that he had planted. And so on his third missionary journey, when he gets to Ephesus, uh, a delegation from Chloe's house. You see that in chapter one, verse 11. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 11, uh, chapter one, verse 11. A delegation from Chloe's house bring a letter to Paul at Ephesus, um, letting him know that there are some problems in the church. Um, and so Paul writes this letter to the church at Corinth. He writes it from uh, Ephesus. And in this, in uh, the book of First Corinthians, Paul deals with a variety of issues, a variety of, uh, of topics. And that is because every now and then, the church gets off track. Did you hear what I said? That every now and then, the church gets off track. And, and, and believe the reason, here it is, the reason that the church gets off track is because of the composition of the church. The church gets off track because who's in it? The church gets off track because who's guiding it? The church gets off track because us in it. The church gets off track because we get off track. The church gets off track because members get off track. Ushers get off track. The choir gets off track. Yes. Uh, the deacons get off track. The ministers, yeah, I'm going all the way. The ministers get off track. And yeah, even, and pastors get off track. And, and for that reason, beloved, oftentimes the church gets off track. So the church at Corinth, beloved, had gotten off track. So Paul writes this letter to the church at Corinth. He writes it from Ephesus to, 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 to get the church back on track. In, 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 in chapters one through four, he, he urged them to mend the divisions that came in the church. And he said, the way you mend divisions in the church 
is by the preaching of the cross. Now, now, now let me tell you where I'm going here. Five times here in the book of, first, uh, uh, of chapter 11, Paul says, and when you come together, five times, of when you come together, that when you come to church, uh, when you come back to church, he says five times. He, he, he starts out saying, men, the divisions in the church. In other words, when you come back to church, don't come back to the divisions that you left in the church. Don't come back to the way you were doing it before. There are, there were, Paul said, there are divisions, he says, when you come, the way you mend divisions is by the preaching of the cross. And when you come back, make the preaching of the cross the priority. Oh, 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 oh yes, he said, when, when, when you come back, when you gather, he said, and our text verse says, he says, he says uh, that, that I, I, I can't praise you right now. I cannot praise you right now that when you come together, you see it right there? Reverend Cheryl just read that. That when you come together, he said, is not for the better, but for the worse. Did you hear that? Paul says, because of what's going on in the church, that it could be that when you come to church, you leave worse than you were when you came. That would, oh my God, oh, oh my God. Listen, beloved, I come to church because I need the church. A amen. I, I, I come to church because I need, I need to know more of the requirements of discipleship. When I come to church, I, I need more of the word of God. When, when, I, when I come to church, I, I need the fellowship of the saints. When I come together, I, I wanna put my praise with somebody else's praise and put my worship and have, yeah, incorporate my personal praise and worship with somebody else's praise and worship and together we can all have corporate praise and worship. Uh, Paul said that when, when you come together in the church, that ain't happening. He said, that ain't happening. He said, it, 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 he, he said, he was talking to the church at Corinth. He says, the, the, the church at Corinth, he said, y'all clickish. He said, he said y'all clickish. And what he said, he said, that's what he said. He said that when you come together, uh, church at Corinth, church at Corinth, I'm talking about the church, he said, church at Corinth, when you come together, your concerns uh, 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 about the click agenda is more important, oh my God, somebody, oh my, ain't talking about nobody, just talking about what I'm talking about. The click agenda is more important than the Christ agenda. He said, and when you come to church, don't go back to that. Don't, don't, no, no, don't, don't go back to that. Don't go back to the divisiveness. Yeah, so when you come together, I can't praise you. Yeah, Paul said, I can't, I can't, I can't salute you for that. Amen. See, when I come to church, I come to get help, not to get hurt. When I come, I come to get built up, not torn down, talking to somebody. Yeah, I, I, I already know. I'm tore up from the floor. So when I, I'm already beat down when I get there. I'm, I'm already beat down when I get to church. And when I get there, I'm already, I don't need anybody to beat me down in the Father. I need somebody to tell me that there's a power that can lift me up. I need to know in my darkness that there is a bright side somewhere. I need to know that there is a power who can turn things around and bring me through? Oh, does anybody want what I want when you come to the church? 
Oh, oh, oh hallelujah. He, he says in, in, in verse number three, in chapter three, he said, one leader builds on another. First Corinthians chapter, chapter number three. One leader builds on another. You see, that, that was this seniority problem in the church. Those who came in under Paul didn't like those who came in under Paulus. Those who came in under Paulus couldn't deal with those who came in under Peter. You know, some came in under Paul. Some came in under Paulus. Some came in under Peter. Then there was a fourth group who said, we don't identify with none of them pastors. All we want is Jesus. So there's this little super Holy Ghost club in every church who's more saved than any and anybody else. They can't identify with nobody else. They are so heavenly minded that they ain't no earthly good. Oh my, and he said, don't go back to that. Don't, don't go back to that top drawer in the church dresser. Don't go back to this uh, 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 class membership, uh, 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 the big members and the little members. Oh my God, the important members and they're not, don't, don't, he said, don't go back to, when you go back to church, don't go back to that stuff. Oh my God. And when I go back to church, I want him to praise me. Here it is. Now see, see we, we, we go back to church to worship and praise. And somebody said, well, I'm going to church to get my praise on. And contextually, when you really understand that, th that's all right to say that if, in context. But not only, that, not only that, beloved, do we go to church to get our praise on, but Paul is saying that we go, as we go, then the Lord can get his praise on. <laughs> Listen, when you go to church, are you the reason that the Lord can get his praise on? By the way you serve, does the Lord cut a step? By the way you oh, serve, does the Lord get happy? Oh, mm. Are you the reason that the Lord can get his praise on? Oh, I, I want to be a part of a church. Yes. If you see the article that I wrote, in the newsletter this week, is uh, talking about Beulah as a praising church. But the whole idea is, yes, it's, it's, it's one thing to be a praising church. Oh my God. But it's, it's another to be a church that causes him to praise. Oh my, oh my God. Tell somebody, I want to make the Lord cut a step. I want to make the Lord dance a jig. Oh, Paul, Paul said, I can't praise you. Oh, my God, I can't praise you. Oh, my, I want, I want to be a part of a ministry that praises God. Oh, my, it can be praised for the way we serve the Lord. Oh, that's the, in verse three, chapter three, there is this seniority. My God, and you know, one has been there longer, and others been there longer, and one who's been there longer is more important than those, though them new folk. You could be a place ten years, and they still call you them, them new folk. Yeah, and and, and in chapter four, Paul argues that whatever you do, you you do it for Christ. Yeah, it, it, Paul must have heard uh, Alpha Johnny Julian Bush talk about the fact that whatever you eat or whatever you drink, you do it for the glory of God. So in, in chapter four, uh, uh, Paul argues, uh, just as Johnny Julian Bush does, that what you do, whatever you do, you do it for God's glory. And beloved, that takes, that takes the competition out of it. That takes the one upsmanship out of it. That takes the, the who's more important out of it. That means that the only one that is important is Jesus himself. Oh my God, and my God, 
and, and it could it be? Could could it be? Or I, I don't go back. Don't go back to church where your agenda is more important than than the Lord's agenda. Don't don't, don't go. No, don't. Mm -mm. Don't go back. Don't don't want to be a member of a Burger King Baptist Church. A Burger King Baptist Church is where a church where I can have it my way. <clears throat> oh, Paul said. Paul is saying that this little this little clip, this, this, this little church clip, and the suggestion is, why don't why don't you and your little clique just go somewhere and form your own church? Yeah. If everybody else is wrong, ain't nobody right but you. Uh, are you in this little Holy Ghost club and you can't deal with the, with, with the Paulines and the Petrins and, and the Apollons. All, all you. Mm, 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 oh, oh, my God. Don't, don't go back to jerk. So when we go back, we want to be, we, we want to go back to where we're going to go back. Oh my God, I'm talking too long here. We want to go back ooh, and I'm going to be in this passage, in this 11th chapter of 1st Corinthians every first Sunday. Um, when, when I go back, I want to go back and do worship in a way where it can be praised and where the Lord can be praised. In, in, in chapter number five, Paul deals with, he, he gets into morals. In chapters five to six, he deals with some moral issues. In chapter five, there, there was a fellow in the church who was going with his father's wife, who was sleeping with his stepmama. And, um, and that's bad enough, but here it is. Here's what's really bad about it is the church knew it and they looked the other way. You see, it's had, it had no standards. Do, do, you want, do you want to be a part of a ministry that has no standards? Do you, do you want to be a part of a ministry where anything goes? Oh my God, listen beloved, oh my God. And, and there are those, oh, 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 all of us fail in some kind of way. But even when we fail, even when we don't live up to the standards, we will not lower the standards. Amen. And, and, and as we celebrate this Lord's Supper Day, Paul said, let, let a man, I'm, I'm going to get to it, if, if I get to it, let, let a person examine himself. Oh, and, and the truth is, if you examine yourself, you will see that there is a distance between where you are and the standards. Our theme is growing up to the head that we are measured by him. We are measured by Jesus. We don't measure ourselves by one another because I can always find somebody, uh, 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 if I want to, who I think that I am better than and more efficient than in a particular area. But if I'm really honest about it, and use that same judgment. If I'm, if, if, if I'm, real, I, I'll find somebody that they are better in a particular area than I am. But here's the deal, beloved: we don't measure ourselves by one another. We both measure ourselves by Him. We are growing up to Him. We're not growing up to one another. We encourage one another to grow up to Him, who is the head, even Christ. In chapter six, in chapter six of First Corinthians, the church folk, they were doing things, they couldn't settle their problems. So they were taking one another to court. And Paul said, oh, that, that's a bad witness that because of your love for the Lord that you, you ought to do all you can to work out your difference and, and to avoid the court now, I do admit that sometimes you just can't avoid that, but do all you can, yes, to avoid that. 
In chapter 7, he deals with marriage. Then he gets to chapter 8. He talks about eating meat that had been sacrificed to idols. And he talked about that and how that looked and how there are some things that mature Christians uh, ought not do or say in front of weaker Christians because it will call them to offend. And we got to shun the very presence of evil. Um, anything that would suggest or look like evil. Paul argues that the believer ought to abstain and stay away from, from that. Oh, chapter 9, uh, Paul says our ministry ought to be based on encouraging one another. Chapter 10, we need to avoid idolatry. And then here we get to chapter number 11. That's where we are. That's the background. I won't have to go over that next week because that we know where we are. We're in, in chapter number 11. Well, let me go on tape. The chapter 12, 13, and 14, Paul's dealing with spiritual gifts. Then chapter 15, he deals with the resurrection. And chapter 16, he tells you to sit your money aside so you can give your offering on the first day of the week. That's 1 Corinthians. That's 1 Corinthians. Well, back to chapter number 11. That's where we are. He, he, he's five times in this chapter, he talks about when you gather. That, 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 that when you come together. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of those synoptic, uh, tell us about Jesus and the Lord's Supper, that he took bread, he blessed it, and, and he gave it to his disciples. John does not talk about that, but he, talk, he does talk about the activities following that Lord's Supper. Uh, and, but, but then Paul, Paul explains it now because here the church at Corinth had gotten off track. So the, the, what's going on here is <clears throat> that there was an agape feast. It was a love feast where uh, everybody would come together. It was, it was a potluck. Everybody would come together. Everybody would bring a dish. And the whole idea was you put it out, that everybody would eat. You would, you would, you would bring a, a dish based upon what you had. And everybody would eat based upon their need. Did you hear what I said? Everybody would contribute according to their ability. Then everybody would receive and eat according to their need. Let me say it one more time. Everybody didn't give the same thing because everybody did not have the same resources. You, you, you gave, everybody brought it, then everybody. The problem was this click movement got to going on. And, and, and Paul says that those who had, they began to minister to others, to others who were just like themselves. And he goes on to say this. He says, when you belittle any of the Lord's children, when you make a difference, when you degrade, when you belittle, when you ignore the poor, when you ignore any who are less fortunate, Paul said, you are disrespecting the Lord's church. He said, don't do that. He said, don't, don't play that one upsman stuff. Don't, don't play that big shot stuff in the church. And that, 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 that when you do that in the church, you are degrading the Lord's church. So he said, when you go back to church, don't go back to that class system. Don't go back to that division. He said, when you do it, I, I got to close you now. He said, now when you do it, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. What one trust said, you 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 proclaim that when you come and when you do it the right way, oh my God, they, they had the love feast, uh, the love feast, and 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 they were discriminating 
doing the love feast of the poor one, the poor ones, those who did not have it, those who didn't have certain names, those who were not a part of certain families. Yeah, some ate off of China, some ate off of paper plates. Yeah, yeah. some ate uh, some stuff and they hid some stuff in the kitchen so others couldn't get it. Paul said, that ain't right. Paul, Paul, Paul said, listen, everybody said, let, 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 I'm, I got to make it live. I got to bring it up here. Paul said, you need to make enough upside down pineapple cake for everybody. Don't, don't make, listen, don't make just enough banana pudding for the head table. Amen. Mm -mm. Get enough bananas. <laughs> and enough vanilla wafers, <laughs> hallelujah. Make enough, oh my God, because if you don't, Paul said, you are discriminating the Lord's church and you are not showing forth. He died for everybody. And this agape feast, oh, they made a difference out of who ate. And then he went on to say, that the gluttony came in, they overate. And then he says, they got drunk. And after they'd had gluttony, and after they were drunk, in that love feast, then they went in to observe the Lord's Supper. Did you hear that? After they had made a difference in the people, after they had discriminated the people, after they had put people in certain classes, the upper class and the lower class, after they had done that, then they go and take this up. After they had mistreated the Lord's people, then they go to his supper. And Paul says, don't go back to that. Don't go back to that. Paul said, don't. When you come together, five times he says in this passage, when you come together, and when you come together, don't go back to that. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, let me quit, let me, oh my, I'm going to finish this, I'm going to finish. There's so much in here to unpack. Oh my God. He said, you do show for the Lord's death when he comes. And beloved, when we partake, well, let me let me just close. He 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 after he he, he is to do the Lord's Supper. Paul says that he took the bread, he takes it. He takes it. And and, and I think the first request that we application we were out here is the Lord, Lord, please take me. Because I've taken myself in some bad, bad directions. I've, I've taken my place, myself in some places where I, I really couldn't recover. It was only your grace that brought me through and brought me out. So I've learned. I've learned to let you take me. Paul said, and he took the bread. Oh, can anybody say I'm here today because he took me? Thank you, Leroy Rouse. Thank you, son, Rouse. Oh, I'm here because, because he took me. And, and he took me places where I couldn't go myself. He, he took me to take me. He took me to take me where I couldn't go myself. Preach pastor be up in here. There. Listen, he took me to take me. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. If you know... If you've been praying about where you want to go and, and, and your goals and your aspirations, oh my God. So Lord, oh my, so Lord, take me so you can take me. Take me so you can make me. Lord, I've I, 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 I set my own agenda. I, I made my own plans, but Lord, they did what's wrong. Lord, I turn it over to you. I turn me over to you. 
I turn my plans over to you. So Lord, take me and make me. He took it. He blessed it. And he broke it. And he, he took it. And he blessed it. And he broke it. Listen. And the breaking did not negate the blessing. Here it is. There are times, beloved, that the Lord's breaking is an integral part of the Lord's making. Help me, prodigal son, that he was the Lord broken in the pig pen so he can make him a candidate for restoration in the father's house. He came to himself in the pig pen and he recognized himself and he made his way back to the father's house. So as we come now to celebrate the supper, we celebrate beloved, his taking, his breaking, his body, his blood that was shed for you and me. So Paul argues with these people in the church at Corinth that when you come together, and we'll talk about this next time, as the church, when you come together as the church, that when you come together as the church, here it is, beloved, when you come together as the church, is the church only the church when it comes together in the church house? Oh. If two believers go to the mall, are they the church? Yeah, when is the church not the church? Paul said, when you come together as a church. And the question, when is the church not the church? Is the church just the church on Sunday from maybe 11 to 1? Is there a time when the church is not the church? Is there a time when a Christian is not a Christian? Is there a time when a believer is not a believer? Is there a time when people of faith are not people of faith? Uh, when you come together as the church, thank you, Paul. When this adverb of time, is there a time when the church is not the church? And Paul is arguing, the church is not just a church when the church is in the church house worshiping as the church, but the way you treat others. John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you might have, that you have loved one for another. So it is in, in the Lord's Supper. It was in that agape feast that they discriminated among uh, one another. Oh my God, and, and we see on the national horizon, uh, on an international horizon, uh, the hate that's being spewed out of or Asian hate and racial hate and, or, and even today will be a part of a discussion uh, about Ethiopian Jews and and, 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 and the hate that's going on. Oh, beloved, when we hate and when we discriminate, when we belittle, when we segregate, we are degrading and despising the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and the, with the, the church of the Lord and also the Lord of the church. All of sin becomes short of his glory. 623 says, uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 5, 8 says, but while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, beloved, love me. And 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And beloved, if you will call upon the name of the Lord, you can be saved. May God bless you. And may you join us, beloved, on Facebook at the Beulah Baptist Church, the Beulah Experience, and this is Pastor Jesse Ward Bottoms, Jr., the Beulah Baptist Church of Poughkeepsie, New York. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. 
is our prayer for you. 